That connection, it had just had to naturally grow. Because if I tried to force anything, it would have messed it up, I think. Absolutely. And um, so you're right in that regard. And, and I think I think you see then that three months is, is could be enough, but it, could, it may not be enough. Like I said, if, if things don't happen on their own first, if you don't show people that you're doing things regardless of the money, and you're not relying on the money, mm -hmm. That right there, you're right. When you tell that story to people, especially on your profile for your crowdfunding campaign, that's what's really going to touch people and say, you know, we believe so strongly in this that, you know, at one point I put money on my credit card. I think you mentioned you did that before. So, you know, you have a video of you giving a TED talk, I believe. That's something you put on the video. You're going to want to, when you do the actual Kickstarter video, the piece where everyone sees it, donate, you're going to, you're going to want to show your whole team, like Helen and Lynn are going to be on the video saying, like, we believe in this project because of this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Can we have them do the Macarena? That's yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. you can make it funny. Exactly. I'm going to get hit for that. But <laughs> what about this? Would the Dalai Lama want to be in your Kickstarter video? That right there would make it go viral in one shot. Yeah, one like shot. Your, your traditional network is strong. Mm -hmm, yeah. Do you see what I mean? You yeah. guys actually should not have a lot of trouble, especially if you do the planning and get him to agree to come and maybe like maybe even have a launch event where the Dalai Lama comes and he like gives a speech or something that and he's like <laughs> peace, love and harmony and donations. That, that's a nice thought, but <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, there, so. it, it probably wouldn't happen there, but but in other words, you know, you have that you have a lot of resources and it's just taking note of who they are. And th these business people as well, like yeah, they amazing. They, they, they may be willing they, they may be willing to be the people who say hey can you just start us off so we hit the 30 percent like these guys that you know who are wealthy mm -hmm. and you have that relationship with you say this is what we're doing we, we're trying to line up people so that for our first week we make a splash would you guys be willing to donate instead of your annual giving campaign or whatever the case may be can you put it through here this time just switch the money that you were already going to give us and switch it here so that we do get that herd mentality approach where now it's like, wow, Westcon's making a splash. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the news is coming, interviewing everybody. Where does that go when you say, here's this businessman who's going to say, okay, sure, I'll give you $10,000, and you say it goes here. What does that mean exactly? So so you're, you're not collecting any money right now. Right. You're, you're saying that in your three-month planning period, you're saying to him, I'm just trying to, to gauge what, what, what I can expect for this fundraising goal. Like our goal is 50,000. I'm trying to see if we can reach that goal within a certain period of time. And just so you know too, just so you can educate them, you could say the, the, the statistics show that if we don't get 30% in the first week, there's a big chance we won't raise the rest. So we're just reaching out to you to see if you'd like to support us in this when we, when we go live. Right. Now when, when it goes live, <coughs> When you create the crowdfunding campaign on whatever site you choose, you are linking it to whatever bank account you want it to go to, which means, I, I know we had this conversation the last time, there's some sort of accounting that has to happen with all that. So that's something you guys got to work out where it goes, but you link wherever you'd like the money to eventually be deposited once the campaign is over, okay. you would determine where that would go. So you would tell them it's going into the account designated for the Center of Compassion, Creativity, and Innovation. Okay. I just. It just uh, yeah. Well, no, I just. The electronic funding and someone, I say, okay, yes, I will. Where does it go? Then it then does it become published on the crowd our crowdfunding site? It says, Helen Bichard gave ten thousand dollars and and it's. It's there for all the world to see, or is it? You could choose to be anonymous if you like. Yeah. You, you could choose either anonymous or make it public. So it will be there, though. That's what Helen. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So that so that when Lynn comes to the site yeah. and says, "Oh, look at that! Someone already gave ten thousand dollars." It's published there. Oh so, yeah. 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 So in other words, the the, the I guess the, I'm just not understanding yeah, so the actual like, logistics. So of let's it all. say you have. Um, Maybe the best thing to do is show you on here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe just let me show you on I've here. I've on a few of the sites. Through, um, it does, it comes up so if I were to go okay. to Kickstarter.com. 
And some of the sites you have to raise the full amount to get the money, and some of them you can get to keep whatever you hmm. raise. So if you say you want $50,000 and you almost raise $1,000, you almost have to the dollars. Nope, so right. that goes up. But that's not a very good policy because yeah. then the people who don't need the money look at that and say, well, you don't get the full amount. And so some of the sites suggest we still. So let's just see. Um, this one says, mm -hmm. show okay. Pittsburgh, show your Pittsburgh pride on the world stage. So this is a crowdfunding campaign that's live right now. They have eight days to go. Mm -hmm. Their goal was $30,000, and they've raised $21,000. Mm -hmm. And that's only from 136 people. I see. Okay. So, so if you want to see it, the, up here, you have updates that's that okay. the campaign makes, and you have backers. So it actually shows you the backers. Oh, uh, okay. So see, it's like... So you can get to it. Yeah, I see. The, yeah Lewis, Brian. So like anyone who wants to be made public, it'll okay. show what they did. I don't think it'll show the actual amount that they pledged unless they want them to, but it looks like it doesn't show the amount. But, um... What's up to the right? Right uh, here? No, uh, oh. um, Right here? Yeah, this is, this is uh, where you get so your ten rewards. Ten backers, ten yeah. backers that pledge ten dollars or more, nineteen backers, I see. Yeah, so, so you, you could see here, this is why the rewards are important, because mm -hmm. for so the donation, words. you're offering a reward, yeah. and you could choose, like, these aren't standard amounts, you could choose like one dollar. You can choose whatever you want as your mm -hmm. as your pledge amounts, and you and you type this in yourself, like whatever you want that to be. So that's why the creativity comes in too. Is what are some cool rewards you could do? I mean, maybe maybe like if the Dalai Lama is up to it for like ten thousand dollars, you can have a thirty minute phone call with the Dalai Lama. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like just make it like a huge splash. Like, okay. That's it. There's a lot of like unique things you could do, and if the Dalai Lama, you know, is willing to do that, help. Make a hundred thousand. For a hundred thousand dollars, you can you can have, you can be get blessed. some great karma. Yeah, exactly. Um, so okay. you know, there's so that's just some interesting things there. But you're right. The constituencies, as people are talking about this, they they should kind of just people should know if someone's like sick and they're coming to you and they're saying. What can you guys do to help me? You're not going to pitch them to like take money from them, right? Right, right. right. You know, yeah. But you know, so that's. But you're right. There is two constituencies, and this is this is the this is the part of the campaign messaging that you guys might need to think about because if you need money for operating costs, which you do, there's operations for the center, and then there's the projects for the center. Mm -hmm. Right. Either you do one or the other, or both, and. It might be tough to do both, but there is a way you could probably do it. It's just, you just have to frame it in a way. Because I know a lot of people, they go to Kickstarter because, and, and, other, and other projects, because they, they see a cause and they know that it's going directly to the cause, as opposed to like other things. But that not necessarily means that they wouldn't do it. Right. Maybe you say the initial goal is, one of your projects you need $30,000. So the initial goal is thirty thousand dollars. A stretch goal would be anything over the thirty that's raised goes to the center. So you meet your original goal, but you still want to raise more after the fact. Mm -hmm. So just expand it for a stretch goal to say the rest of the money is going to help the center identify and staff more projects to, so that we can help more people. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, and let me uh, let me see. So you have the that. Okay. So. Once you have all this in place, you, you've been campaigning, you're basically, you're identified that your crowd is basically ready to go. The next big step is going to be actually setting up that crowdfunding campaign profile. So, like, you, you know, the, the campaign profile is, is extremely important because you have to tell a clear story of who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and how much is it going to cost. And one of the best ways to to really do this piece is to do what is known as kind of campaign modeling. Go to these websites like Kickstarter or whatever other site you're on. Identify mm -hmm. sites that, that have done something similar yeah. and kind of use them as a model to shape what you're, you're about to do. Because they might give you good ideas on rewards and they might give you good ideas on, on, on a bunch of things of that nature. And you may even want to go a step further and say, let me try to identify how big their social media channels is to see if we're ready to launch. Because if they have like five million followers and you guys have a hundred, 
you know, maybe there's a discrepancy yeah. there. You know, um, but it, <laughs> campaign modeling is um, is really important because that'll that'll give you a good idea of who has been successful and why, who has failed and why, and then you guys can model it that way. Um, that's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot to go. Yeah, and then of course you have then you know part of the profile too is the video. So you, you want to have a video that's no longer than five minutes. Ideally, the video should be probably, you know, two to four minutes is ideal. Anything more than five, people are just going to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless you girls are doing the Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> then I wouldn't last the whole five minutes. <laughs> two to four minutes is the best. <laughs> 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 Two to four minutes, that makes a lot of sense. And then I guess that then, you know, hypothetically you're going to hit launch, and then the final piece is fulfilling the rewards. After the campaign is done, you know, the, the rewards, it gives you a timeline. You, you can estimate, like, when the rewards are going to be fulfilled. So on a Kickstarter campaign... <coughs> Pebble had a problem with that. Yeah, they did. So, like, they estimated, like, their campaign ended, let's say, in May, and they said, we estimate we'll be able to give you your order in June. Um, if that doesn't happen, they just have to communicate and say, sorry, we're having delays. But you guys want to make sure you're... Yeah, we want to be on it. Yeah, you want to yeah. be on it. So yeah. it's really reward fulfillment is the last piece after you've raised uh, all the money. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is kind of like a huge high-level overview. And obviously there's a lot of detailed steps in the way. But um, I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed by this because I know you have 100 million other things you guys are working on. But you don't have to make it, if, if you don't have the resources per se to make it and do every single step 100%, you could even do some things, like you could decide what your resources are and, and still do certain things that will then allow you to raise money even a little chunk. We've had to do this and we're fortunate because we have a lot of people in the community who have volunteered to do different parts. So we've had um, the former Sony executive assistant um, come and help us do some marketing materials with another highly successful businessman who um, that volunteered their time to come do it. And they're just about done with our first marketing kind of piece with making, every, making forcing me to be succinct to what the mission and vision statement are already. So I think we're kind of ahead in certain instances. I mean, we got to develop other parts, but in other places, I think, you know, the volunteers who've stepped up for us and for the center and for the community have, have kind of forced me to take a few of these steps uh, already in a good way. Okay. So. How, about, how about this, then? Um, based on just the university's resources, whether it's email or, or phone or whatever, would you guys want to host some sort of meeting within the university to say we're looking for a project team just like send an email where we're in our kind of knowledge gathering phase business planning phase we want to tell you what we're thinking of doing and we want to identify people who be would want to help and I'd be happy to come and like also be there to kind of talk mm -hmm. through what what we're about to try to do <clears throat> but maybe because there's only so many people mm -hmm. Let's just say we're, we're, we're considering doing this. We'd like to host like an open forum just for people to talk to us and we can just kind of share ideas. And then if you're interested after the forum's done, we can set up another meeting with the interested parties and determine. One of the things I'd like to do instead of having maybe the open forum, we have people emailing us saying that they would like to help. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that works. maybe we, we yeah, maybe we contact those people who've yeah. shown an interest who want to step up, um, because to me, this is such an important first step, that this first crowdfunding has to be on, it has yes. to work. And I want people who are passionate about it, who've actually reached out to us, that will then, I know, want to take the time, because they've already demonstrated the fact that mm -hmm. they've taken the time uh, to reach out to us when we didn't even, That's huge. you know, right? so, I, I mean, maybe Helen, uh, we talk about this with Emily and Ryan and Peggy, mm -hmm. you know, about 
these possibilities. Well, so, we also you know, have the two boards, the advisory board and exactly. the governing board. So we have, right. And, so, you know, they have contacts, so that would be a logical place for us. Because I, I think we can get moving faster yeah, with so. that. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. whatever right. comes from those two, those three groups, right, we then have a meeting that with you of those, you know, people from those three groups that would then kind of figure out what they're getting themselves into. Sure. And then they can opt out or opt in. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, as you see, it's a big process, but chunk it down in steps. This mm -hmm. is step one. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you have a, you have your team already already handled in one step. So we'll bring this up at the governing mm -hmm. board meeting and then the next advisory mm -hmm. board too. Yeah. And like I said, I uh, I'm very interested in helping here. I feel you guys have a unique opportunity in how young your organization is, in who sponsored it initially in the resources that you have as a university as a whole um, and the fact that crowdfunding is starting to be more and more mainstream like I think Channel 11 News had something on crowdfunding recently like things are starting to pick up yeah just seeing some of the projects that were I'm not gonna say which one yeah and they're how much money they're raising and the effect is so like just there and our effect the in terms of what we want to do is so had much broader impact that mm -hmm. I, I think if we it's say it right and we do it right, mm -hmm. looking, it gives me hope when I saw those, oh, yeah. some of those projects. Yeah, I mean, let's just see, so yeah, so let's just show your picture probably, let, let's just even see. I wasn't saying that one. <laughs> <laughs> so like, they, they, they must have been like a good video, like the video is almost one of the most important things. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Practice. Practice. <laughs> Practice. 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 There's much to be said for the old saying that says that if you want to get to Carnegie Hall, you have to practice, practice, practice. But you also need the support of others. And so for this, the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra's 82nd visit to Carnegie Hall, we'd like to invite you to take part in the journey by contributing to this Kickstarter campaign.